In this video we're going to cover OPC Systems WPF HMI. Specifically we're going to talk about using Microsoft Expressions Blend to build a graphical user interface using external graphics built in another package. We've opened up Microsoft Expressions Blend for Visual Studio 2012. There's some specific advantages to using Blend for creating your user interface. There's some features within Blend that don't easily uh, exist within Visual Studio. So we'll use Blend to create the graphical interface. We've got our main window open and we'll start out by sizing that window. Let's set it to uh, standard size here. Let's go 1280 by 720. We've got our window size now. The next step, if we want to be able to make our application resizable, screen resolution independent, we're going to want to make a change here right off the start. So let's select our grid and we'll change that layout type to a view box. And we'll just size that to fit our window and set that to stretch in both directions. And now the next thing we're going to do is take the stretch property of the view box and we're going to set that to none until we're done building our application and ready to run it. This will make building the application a lot easier. And now let's add a grid to our application in the view box. So we'll select grid and double click that and we'll just size that to fit within the view box. So stretch that out so it takes up the entire area of the view box and we're all set there. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is add a reference to the OPC Systems Dashboard DLL. So we'll expand references here and add a reference. In a 64-bit operating system we'll find our references under Program Files x86 and a 32-bit you'll find them under Program Files. So we're going to go with Program Files x86, go down to Open Automation Software, opcsystems.net and we'll scroll down to get to our OPC WPF dashboard DLL and we'll select that and select open. So now we have that reference there we should have our OPC systems controls in our toolbar. So let's expand that and we'll just type in OPC WPF and we'll see our list of controls there. Let's uh, shut that down for now and there's a couple more things we're going to do to prepare our application. So let's take our references and we'll go up to the application file itself and we'll add a new folder. And we can name that folder. I'm just going to call it uh, images. And now we can right click on images and add items to that list. So what we'll do is add existing items and I have my items in this folder. I'm going to take that background image and then we're going to select some images for our objects on the screen. I have previously copied these and created various colors for them. So let's uh, grab the images that we'll be using for this application. Now we've selected all of our objects, our graphics that we want to add. I'm just going to select open and we'll have them in our folder now. The first step we're going to take is we're going to take that background image and we're going to add it to our file and you'll notice it's bigger than our current uh, size of our window. That's perfectly fine. We're just going to come up to our toolbar and we're going to make that into a brush resource. And then we'll be able to use that brush resource as our background. So we'll select make brush resource and we can just change the name of that to background and hit OK. I'm going to delete the image now and we'll go into our grid and we'll select our background brush and on the toolbar below we'll select a brush resource and that'll be our background. And you'll notice it automatically sized to our grid. So let's accept that. That's good. With Expressions Blend we can zoom in and zoom out simply by using our scroll wheel and it will focus on the area where you have your cursor located. So let's zoom in a little bit on this application and now we can start adding to the application our images. So I'm going to go down and we're going to select our Object Explorer and let's go grab an OPC WPF image control and we'll grab that and I'm just going to 
temporarily size that on my screen right over this valve. We'll go to our common properties and we'll select our source image and let's make that valve top left and that's our yellow valve. That's fine. That'll be a good image to use as our source image. We'll use yellow as our indication of bad data quality and I'm just going to size that and let's go over to our sizing mode here in our stretch and let's just make that fill. So now we can size it in both directions as we want and it'll follow where we put it. That's looking a little bit better there. We're covering the image that was on the original screen and there we go. Under the common properties OPC systems we'll go and select a source tag. I'm going to hit Browse and select my local system. We'll go down to our WPF tags and we'll select our new tanks demo and we'll pick our inlet valve tank 1, get the value of that and select OK. And now we'll add the images for bag quality and for 0 and for 1. So now we'll go to our source bag quality and we'll pick the graphic for the bag quality. That will be our top left yellow. We'll grab the image for our zero or false value. That'll be the top right, left green. And for our for our true tag, we'll pick top left red. So now when the tag associated with this goes true, it will show the red image. When it's false, it's going to show the green image. So we have that in here. Now let's just uh, do a quick test of that. We'll hit F5. And we're showing it as false right now. Let's go to OPC Systems and just test that. Let's go down to our WPF tags and we'll take the Tank 1 inlet. That is false. Let's set it to true and we'll see our image change to red. Back to false and it goes back to green. Very good. So we've got our first valve in here. Now we need to do the same thing for each of the other valves. And I will do that quickly and then we'll set up our motors in the same fashion. Okay, we have our pumps and our valves all set up. We're going to go on to add a linear gauge to our tank control. Let's go over here and grab the OPC linear gauge control. And we'll drop that on our application and size that. Let's slide that over a little bit. And we'll set a few properties here. We'll start out with the linear gauge brushes. We'll leave the fill brush at red. And let's change these others to white, the foreground color the major ticks fill color, minor ticks fill color, and the value label. We'll set that to white also. Now we can see them a lot better. And under our common properties OPC systems we'll go down and select our value tag. Hit browse, expand our local system, and go down to our WPF, new tanks demo, and tank one level. We'll expand that, grab the value of that tag, select OK, and that'll give us our value to, for the fill on that. Let's set our value gain to 10. As our actual value in the OPC systems tag is 0 to 1. So now we're going to scale that 0 to 100. There are other properties we can affect easily. They're all listed here. And for more information, let's go to the linear gauge video. Meanwhile, let's copy that and place the same thing on our tank 2. And we'll set our tag property for that one. And we'll select tank 2 level value. There we go. And we're all set there. One other property. Though, let's change this from a pointer and let's change that to a bar fill. So we'll go up to our common properties and we'll select our gauge style. We can go with a pointer, a whisker, or a bar. Let's make that a bar for both of those. Now let's run our application one more time. And there we go. Both tanks are 100% full and we can now start adding some switches to control the valves, the motor, or the valves, and the pumps. Now let's add a rotary button to our application. Let's just place it up here on the screen for right now. The rotary button is based off of a checkbox control. So there's items here that we're going to want to select. Let's set the property here for the is check, and that would be under common properties, OPC systems, is check tag, now let's go and use tank 1 inlet valve and we'll select the value of that. There we go and now that uh, will reflect the position whether it's checked or not. And we'll go down to our content OPC systems and again we'll use that same tag. And let's format this to 
inlet closed and if it's true inlet open and we'll select our set value tag hit browse again we'll use that same one and here for the set value it's a logical discrete we don't have to set up anything else we'll go to our brushes OPC systems and we'll, we're going to select our background tag and we'll use that same one again now let's make that red if it's false and lime green if it's true. Now one other thing we want to change is the color of the text. So let's go to our foreground property and we should find that under brushes. And we'll select our foreground color here and set that to white. And let's just slide that down a little bit so it's in an area where we can see that text a little bit better. And there's one other thing we can do is we can push that text up a little bit. Under our layout padding, let's set that text to a little bit higher in the control there. Now we ought to be able to see that pretty good. Let's run our application and take a look and see what we've got. Okay, we're showing the inlet closed. And if we click on our button, it changed its color, changed the text to inlet open, and changed the valve color to red. Now we're opening and closing that valve. So let's do the same thing and then what I'm going to do is put the buttons on a border control and add a grid to the border control and we'll add the rest of the buttons. So let's drag a border onto our screen here and size that and let's add a grid to the border. Now we can add our buttons into that. And there's a couple different ways. I can drag this over onto that and press the Alt key. We could also take our button in our objects and timelines and drag that onto the grid there. So now the button's on the grid. The only problem with doing that though is that your margin which was set for being on the window is now quite wide. So let's just set those to zero and you'll see that button show up in there. Okay I'm going to arrange this. We'll put a background color on that and we'll be right back. Okay we've added the additional buttons to our application to control all our valves and motors. Okay let's run our application again now. We'll hit F5, start the application up, and there we go. So we've got our tank levels here, and our valves are all closed right now. Let's open up the inlet valve for tank 1, and the main valve, and we filled that to 100%. Let's close both those valves, and let's open up the outlet valve for tank 1 and turn the pump on. And we'll see our level dropping. We also see the reaction on our switches. Close that, open up the main valve and the inlet valve and it fills up. Same thing is true for our tank 2. We're dropping the level. Pump and outlet valve are open. Let's close those and open up the inlet valve and we'll see that rise. That concludes this demonstration of OPC Systems WPF. For more information on OPC Systems please go to our website at www.opcsystems.com.